Hello everybody and welcome back to A Court of Words and Pages. My name is Natalie and welcome to the Mid-Year Book Breakout Tag. This is a tag you see around booktube a lot at this time of year. It's a chance to reflect on your reading year so far and to look ahead to the next few months. So today we'll be going through this tag and answering all of the questions and I will make sure to list the questions down below. So the first question is what is the best book you have read thus far this year? And my answer is going to have to be the Hero of Ages by Brandon Sanderson, which is the third and final book in the Mistborn trilogy. Now, pretty much any of the three Mistborn books could stand in this place, but I think The Hero of Ages was just the best one. It's the conclusion to the series, and the way that this conclusion happens, it's just, it's absolutely perfect. So in Mistborn, we're set in a world where there's this very oppressive ru ruler that's basically ruling over them. It's called the Lord Ruler, and he's very oppressive. So nobility people tend to be elevated and then like the working class or the ska as they're known are very very poor and in this world there's also the magic system of allomancy so people have the ability to use a type of metal to do something most people can only control one type of metal but mistborns can control all types of metals i'm following kelsey who is a mistborn and he is basically gathering this crew in there and they're going to take down the lord ruler and one day when he's in the streets Kelsier finds this little girl named Vin, who he discovers is also a Mistborn, and he recruits her onto the team, and it is the story of how they're taking down the final empire. And the series is just fabulous. Brandon Sanderson is easily one of my favorite authors that I discovered this year, and now he's one of my top authors of all time. And just, oh, the magic system is incredible. The politics in the series are just so smart, and so it's amazing, and... I, I can't sing this series praise enough in the ending. The ending was just like, I didn't know how I wanted this book to end, but like after reading the ending, I'm like, yeah, that ending couldn't have been done any other way and I wouldn't have been happy with it. I do also just want to give an honorable mention to The Dragon Republic by R.F. Kong, which came very close to being out the Hero of the Ages, but alas, not close enough. But The Dragon Republic will get its chance to shine with the next question, and that is, best sequel you read in 2021 and obviously i didn't just want to talk about the mistborn series for this entire video so we will insert the dragon republic here as the best sequel i've read and so the dragon republic is the sequel to the poppy war and in the poppy war we follow ren who was in war orphan from the south and she decides that she's going to get out of it she her foster parents are trying to enter her arranged marriage and she doesn't want this so she trains and takes the test to basically admit people into the military academy and not only does she pass it but she gets high enough marks that she gets to go to the most elite military academy that is in the capital of this empire and however when she gets there things aren't all that better she's still not at home and she starts discovering the magical power that lies in this land and then the empire's greatest enemy attacks them again and Renan and her classmates have to go to war and they find out that war it's nothing like what they've been trained for and this series is just so dark but also so amazing the poppy war is very much inspired by real events that took place in china and asia and it's like terrifying to read some of the stuff that happens and know that that actually happened in real life the characters in this book are just amazing they make so many infuriating choices throughout the series but you also understand why they're doing them but it doesn't make it any easier so this book is just fantastic i think i liked it more than the poppy war and just i am absolutely adoring this series the next question is what's a new release that you haven't read yet but want to and I have to give this one to Mr. Impossible by Maggie Steve Otter, which is the second book in Ronan's series, and it's a spin-off series to The Raven Cycle. The Raven Cycle is one of my all-time favorite series of all time. Ronan is one of my favorite characters. I really enjoy Call Down the Hawk, but I still need to reread it before I can do Mr. Impossible, but yes, I really need to read this book so I can continue to see Ronan's story and how he grows. And I guess I can't really give you a summary for this series, but in the Raven Cycle we're following Blue, who is lives with a bunch of clairvoyants, and she is the only one who isn't, and she's always been told that whenever you kiss your true love, he will die. And then one night when Blue is at a graveyard or wherever, she sees a ghost of someone, and she figures out that that person is Gansey, who goes to the big prep school that's in their hometown, and Blue does not like these boys that go to this prep school, and she was thinking of the Ravens. But alas, Blue gets 
trapped up in them and working on with them to help uncover a dead Welsh king. And this series is just so magical and it's one of my absolute favorites. So I'm very excited to read Mr. Impossible. Next is most anticipated release for the second half of the year. And this one, of course, again, it's another spin-off series, is Once Upon a Broken Heart by Stephanie Garber, which is a spin-off series to Caraval. Now, I have something to confess. I don't know what this book is about. I just heard Caraval spin-off, and I said, yes. So, let us read the Goodreads synopsis for this together. Evelyn Fox was raised in her beloved father's curiosity shop, where she grew up on legends about immortals, like the tragic Prince of Hearts. She knows his powers are mythic, his kiss is worth dying for, and that bargains with him rarely end well. But when Evelyn learns that the love of her life is about to marry another, she becomes desperate enough to offer the Prince of Hearts whatever he wants in exchange for his help to stop the wedding. The Prince only asks for three kisses, but after Evelyn's first promised kiss, she learns that the Prince of Hearts wants far more from her than she's pledged, and he has plans for Evelyn that will either end in the greatest happily ever after, or the most exquisite tragedy. So. Obviously, the Prince of Heart is Jack Wheeler we, in the Carnival series, and you know, he's a very interesting character, so it'll be interesting to see his story and to meet Evelyn. And I have heard some good reviews of this one so far, so I have a lot of hope for it, and I'm so excited. And this one, I believe, comes out in October. No, September 30th, so yes, very excited for that. Next up is Biggest Disappointment of the Year, and probably until about two weeks ago, I didn't have one. I've been pretty happy with all of my reading. And then I read or tried to read The Crown and Gilded Ones by Jennifer L. Armentrout and I couldn't even make it through this book. I DNF'd it at about 50%. So this is the third book in the From Blood and Ash series and in this series we follow Poppy who is the maiden. And that basically means she's never to be looked at, never to be, be heard, and never to be touched until the day of her ascension. But Poppy, she doesn't want that. And then one Day, she meets Hawk who is her new guard and he tempts her with all the things she shouldn't want so I mean it's a bit cheesy and it's definitely a fantasy romance but I so enjoyed the first two books in the series and I was so excited and this just I I couldn't get into it it felt like the story was dragging nothing new was happening it felt like everything was just in dialogue just like I swear like almost all of that 50% I read was dialogue and that was just how she was choosing to get the information across in world building and I just I really wasn't enjoying it this is one thing that I didn't talk about when I was saying why I DNF'd it but the romance also just was boring like nothing was happening like it felt like they reached a standstill in the romance I'm like I need there to be conflict I need something to be happening I can't just be like oh I love you oh I love you it was just it was boring and I wasn't enjoying it, so unfortunately it did really disappoint me. So my mic stopped working about halfway through the video and I didn't realize it until now, until I was editing it, until I have to come and refilm the rest of the stack. So yay, but let's get back up. Question number six, biggest surprise of the year and to this one I'm giving it to The Lady of the River by Philippa Gregory because I just I didn't know what to expect from this book. So in this book we follow Jaquetta who I believe is a, the like niece of one of the Dukes of France and she's also the mother of Elizabeth Louisville who becomes the Queen of England later but specifically just following Jaquetta's life as she grows up in France and then becomes involved in the politics of the English court as she is one of the most trusted friends of Margaret of Anjou who played a big role in English history, like 1500s English history. And I just, I didn't expect to like this book as much as I did. It was just surprising how engaged I was. I mean, I did read this book for a reason because I thought I would like it. I'll talk about that reason actually later in this video, but yeah. Biggest surprise went to this one was really nice. I didn't find the writing too dense or anything, and it was a nice story to follow. Favorite new author I'm just going to very briefly mention is Brandon Sanderson. His books have been some of the favorite I've read all year, so I'm very excited to continue reading his books. Newest fictional crush, I definitely struggled to figure out who I wanted to give this to, because usually I have like 
a thousand fictional crashes and I just really didn't have any this year. But I'm gonna give this to Mr. Darcy from Pride and Prejudice. I don't know, I recently read Pride and Prejudice and I just absolutely loved it. I mean, Darcy is... <laughs> he's a bit of an idiot through some of the beginning of the book. But Jesus, seeing him realize that he actually does like Elizabeth and try to win her back, it's cute. And I liked it. And also, I mean, it's relatable. You're around a bunch of people you don't know, you don't want to meet people, you're rude. We've all done that before. Newest favorite character is Juliet from Our Violent Delights because she was just so strong and just so confident in herself and was like, yeah, I'm going to do this. I'm going to stop this plague from taking over my city. So I guess I should talk about what this book is about. And in Our Violent Delights, we follow gangs in the 1920s in Shanghai, China. We follow two rival gangs, Juliet and Roma, who are from each gang and they have to, they are so ex-lovers, and they have to team up together to try to stop this deadly, magical, weird plague that's spreading throughout the city, causing people to call their throats out. Because if they don't work together, there will be no people to gang rule over. And Juliet, she was just amazing. I mean, <sighs> yeah, she, she's great. She, at the beginning of the book, she comes back from spending some time in New York and she's just so amazing and just so strong. Newest favorite character, favorite fictional character. I can talk. A book that made me cry. So, I don't cry in books a lot. I just, I haven't found a book that's elicited that emotion for me yet this year. But one that I did tear up during is Heartstopper, particularly I'd say Volume 4 by Alice Oseman. Just the way she dealt with mental health in this book was, I thought it was really good. It, it, this volume is also sad and it's not an easy one to read. And in Heartstopper, we follow Nick and Charlie, and it's the romance between the two of them. But in later volumes, we do deal with more difficult topics, like eating disorders and mental health issues. So this was a very touching volume, and a bit sad. And just, it was, it, I thought it was really well done. For a book that made me happy, I don't, this is a really weird one, because I'm like, I can't think of a particular book that made me happy. But I'm going to go with The Deal by L. Kennedy. And in this book, we're following Garrett and Hannah, and Garrett is a hockey star, and he asks Hannah to tutor him for a test because he needs to pass this test to stay eligible to play on the hockey team. And just the romance between the two of them. I mean, this book and the off-campus series by L. Kennedy just brought a lot of joy to me. They're fun, cute romances that I really enjoyed reading. For a favorite book-to-film adaptation that I've seen, I'm going to go with The White Queen which is technically I haven't read the book for this one yet I'm planning to but haven't quite read it yet but this TV series is an adaptation of the White Queen by Philippa Gregory or that series I think it's called the Cousins War series that she's written that's about the War of the Roses and the Tudor Tudor Lancaster War Tudor York Lancaster York and then Tudor got involved English history. I don't understand it. In this series, we follow Elizabeth Woodville, who marries King Edward, and it's about how her marriage, it kind of like causes a lot of chaos in the court, and it's just following that, and it's really good. I really enjoyed it, and that's actually what prompted me to read The Lady of the Rivers, because that's kind of the first book in this series, and yes, I'm trying to read that entire series, but Boy oh boy is it a long series and I'm only one book in. Now I thought The White Queen was really well done, it was interesting, the politics were interesting. There were some interesting parts to it, but I mean it was interesting and I enjoyed the show. So yes, I've also watched the spin-off to that, The White Princess, and I watched like the first episode of The Spanish Queen, I think, which is the third one in it, and I need to get back to watching that. Most beautiful book you've bought slash acquired this year, and that has to go to Witches Steeped in Gold, the Fairy Loot Edition. I mean, this edition is just gorgeous. It's foiled on the front, which I think you can kind of see. It doesn't really have a real cover illustration, it's just really pretty. It has these beautiful sprite edges that go all the way around. The front of the hardcover is also embossed, and it has some beautiful artwork underneath the dust jacket, which is just stunning. I have not actually read this book, but I would say this one takes the cake for being most beautiful. So the final question is, what books do you need to read by the end of the year? And so first off, I want to read more of The Cosmere by Brandon Sanderson. 
two, I want to work on reading books that I get in very late subscription boxes. And the third major goal that I have that hopefully I can end up doing is my library copy is very crinkly, so I apologize. Is to read World Without End by Ken Follett, which is the sequel to Pillars of the Earth, which I read last year because for English, my first thing we got to do in English was read an independent reading book. And I thought, well, I read quickly, so I better pick a big book. And I picked Pillars of the Earth, which is almost a thousand pages. It was the longest book I ever read. I don't know if this one's longer. Ah, the copy I have is at 1,014 pages, so yes. Um, how to describe this series, it's complicated. Basically, the first book is about the building of a cathedral in Kingsbridge. Um, so the second book, I believe, takes place about a hundred years after the first book. And I believe it has to do with the Black of Death. And we're following a new cast of characters, and it's set on the backdrop of the greatest natural disaster ever to strike the human race the Black Death. So yes, um, I enjoyed Pillars of the Earth. It was a bit long, but I really, I did like it and I definitely want to continue on with this series. I think it's a four book series. There's three main books and then there was a prequel that was just released. And yeah, um, I, I, I want to try to read that by the end of the year. Maybe even by the end of the summer, but I don't know, because it'd be in August and I'm not quite sure if that's something I want to do in August. So that was my mid-year book breakout tag. I hope you all enjoyed it. It was a bit weird because very weird change of settings about halfway through this tag and I know I probably rushed through these last few questions because I did not have a good time filming the first version of this so I really didn't want to have to repeat the process but yes. Down below you will find links to all of the books I talked about as well as my bookstagram and my goodreads if you want to follow me there. Subscribe to see more content from me and I will see you all again in my next video. Bye!